Hey folks, my name is Tim Black. Welcome. Today we're diving into a subject that's been keeping me up at nights. We're at a crossroads in our country right now. A crossroads that may define where we go in the future. And as I look around and listen to it all, it seems to me like there's only a couple of voices that we're listening to. But here, here's the thing. I'm not buying it. I think your voice matters. I think my voice matters. The people should be able to speak. We're being fed a narrative that feels more like a rerun than a vision. It's time to ask ourselves, are we really okay with business as usual? How has that been working out for us? Or are we craving the change? And I don't just mean the change in faces. I mean fundamental, real change. This isn't just a political show. This is about our lives. This is about not just our lives, but the lives of our children and our grandchildren. We gotta get this right. We gotta make this make sense. See, so stay with me. Because this is where we dive in and get to the root of the matter. This is where we focus in and get real specific. And I think you're ready for it. I know I'm ready for it. Stephen A. Smith's podcast is taking off. And he recently had a guest by the name of Roland Martin. We're all familiar with Roland. They sat down, they talked. Well, Roland looked like he was in his car. He pulled over and they talked. And they, they had a lot of talking points. I'm going to address those talking points one by one. And all I'm asking is that you hear me out. If you got preconceived notions, table them. I can't tell you to forget how you feel. But table them and then compare notes at the end. That's all I'm asking. All right, here we go. Beating Nikki Haley, convincingly, I might add, the former governor of South Carolina, losing convincingly. Your thoughts about whether or not, she, I, I think she should call it a day. It's over. I think it's clearly obvious. It's been over for a while. She's determined to stay in the race through Super Tuesday. But her support is dwindling before our very eyes. And clearly, nobody is standing in the way of Donald Trump. Your thoughts about what transpired there? Well, first, the Coke Network has already said they're pulling their campaign funding uh, yep. behind her. She doesn't have a, a pathway. Uh, I think uh, she understands that Donald Trump uh, poses an existential threat uh, in terms of to the country. Uh, and what she is hoping for with all these court cases, that something will happen that will cause that support to dwindle, but it's not going to happen. His supporters are locked in. And the reality is there are a lot of Republicans who privately, they cannot stand him but they are afraid of his supporters. So therefore there's really no pathway for her. And so there's no doubt he's going to get the nomination. So now it just simply comes down to Trump versus Biden in November. Roland says Nikki Haley recognizes that Trump is an existential threat. You know, it's amazing. These words that the Democrats like to use. Why was it, is there, has there ever been a Republican who was not an existential threat? Has there ever been an election that wasn't the most important election of our lifetimes? Has there ever been? See, this constant use of fear to scare up votes is basically a humongous turnoff to people that with brains and common sense. And independent voters like me, which make up most of the American public, 47% of Americans are independents. We're not Democrats. I heard somewhere that Roland said he was an independent. Roland never acts like an independent at any time. Stephen A. Smith says in this video that he's an independent. Stephen A. Smith does not, like an, does not act like an independent in this segment. Quite the opposite. These both sound like a bunch of, Repu a bunch of Democrat, Republican Democrats. Um, so those are a couple of the problems that I have with this. But my main problem, guys, is all they do is all Roland and all the Democratic supporters' base of political talking here is do is vilify Trump. They never try to separate policies. This focus of Trump's wrongdoings, if there are wrongdoings, this prosecution of Trump's, this political targeting of Trump, they don't realize this is a huge turnoff to most voters. They don't get that. 
It just starts running together. It's like the man, the, the boy that cried wolf at a certain point. They would be better served if they differentiated Biden from Trump, not by out of, not out of good versus evil, clan versus saint, because Biden is not a saint. And Trump, no matter what you say, he's not a clan member. You could talk policy. Like, what the vision, like, what the policies Biden's going to put in that he's going to implement that Trump will not implement. Like, why can't we have that conversation? Like, ever. And why is it that you allow, and I'm, this is for my viewers, why are we allowing people like Roland Martin and people like Stephen A. Smith to always make the conversation about people's feelings about this guy or that guy? Why is it never about what their vision is or what they're going to get done for us? See, because now, see, black folks are getting better. We're getting smarter and more proficient in our voting. This is what the new black media is trying to usher in. In my respect, and shout out to those in that media and those other folks, be they white, Latino, Asian, who are in media that are not glued to one side of it, but are fighting for a better country, a better world for their communities. That's what I'm talking about. So that's my main problem starting this thing off. I'm tired of it. I hope that you're tired of it. And we need to stop allowing it. We need to start pushing back. And I think we're finally at a point. I'm getting the feeling that we're finally at the point where we recognize that this ain't working for us. In this next topic, Stephen A. Smith is going to bring up Biden's age. Age. I'm not engaging in ageism. I'm not engaging in any kind of insults whatsoever. But he clearly does uh, appears to have slowed a bit and has lost a right. step a bit. Do you foresee him being the Democratic nominee, the Democratic nominee, and really, really going against Trump and trying to get four more years? I do. Him? I do. So again, barring anything health wise happening. Uh, between now and November, I think he is the nominee. Uh, there's no doubt, that, yes, that he has, uh, you could say he slowed a bit. But but here's the thing uh, that I got to remind people about. So, look, the dude was 78 when he got elected in 2020. So I wasn't, I wasn't clueless about who I was voting for in 2020. But let me remind all the people out there uh, who are like, oh, my God, we need more options. Okay. These were the people also running. But Senator Bernie Sanders, Representative Tulsi Gabbard, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Mike Bloomberg, Senator Amy Klobuchar, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, uh, Tom Steyer, former Governor Deval Patrick, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Bennett, Andrew Yang. And so voters didn't pick any. Of, also, remember, Senator Cory Booker, Senator Kamala Harris, all of them were in the campaign. That's right. Voters didn't pick any of them. So for people to go now, oh, my God, we got to have somebody look. If I if I'm Biden Harris and if I'm Democrats, what I'm doing is I'm stop whining, I'm stop complaining, I'm stop fretting, and I'm saying he's gonna be our guy. And what I'm gonna say is, do you are you concerned with somebody who you want to be out there who's virile and jogging, or do you want somebody who got stuff done? Fuller does a good job of defending Joe Biden's age. It makes it all about just people need to just shut up. You just go with the guy. Yeah, that's that's easy to say when you have a you know you have a vested interest in the political funding of the political party to spend money with your application or your your app, your mobile app or your show rolling. They pay advertising revenue to you, but to the rest of us, we want to we are concerned about Joe Biden's actual fitness to do the job. See, Roland Martin is compromised. He's a compromised individual who has skin in the game when it comes to the Democratic Party. He just does. It's just the truth. Because there is no one who can look at someone who can barely walk a flight of stairs, who's, who uses cue cards to remember to keep track or keep their place in a conversation. That's what Joe Biden does. These things has everyone worried. To the point, Rowling got to come out here and curse at Democrats about and, and, and shoo them and repudiate them and scorn them to get them to stop talking about Joe Biden's age. You know what? His age is a problem. It just is. It's not about him being able to do 100 push-ups. It's not about him to be able to go jogging like 
you know, to, to show off his virality, vitality, how virile he is. This ain't boomerang. We don't care how virile he is. What we care about is this man cognitive. Is he cognitively on the decline to the point where we don't feel comfortable with him holding the nuclear codes? I know it may not matter to you, Roland, but it matters to us, Roland. We care about it, Roland. That doesn't make us petty, unfocused, not keeping our eyes on the prize. And you know what I can't stand? I can't stand the fact that Roland gets up here. He talks smack because he's talking to black people. I ain't never heard Roland tell white people nothing. I never hear you get so chippy with, with the whites. Nah, and particularly not the whites who are in power. You didn't get chippy with the whites at CNN when it canned you. Oh, okay, I'm getting personal. Critiques of Joe Biden's age is not just about ageism. You can dismiss it as that and make it about ageism the same way you, when you question anybody black, they make that automatically about racism. Sometimes it is, sometimes just because people are doing a horrible job. Okay? We got to leave room for people to have some criticism. What about us wanting a president that has a fresh perspective? What's fresh about Joe Biden's perspective on politics? What is new, novel, inspiring, refreshing, uh, invigorating, empowering about Joe Biden? Just saying his name makes me want to go to sleep. Nothing. Just saying his name makes me feel deflated. Joe Biden. That's the feeling I get from him. And that's the feeling most Americans get from him. Both in the party and outside the party. And that's what they should be focusing on. They should be saying, we got the infrastructure bill. Done. We got Build Back Better. Done. Inflation Reduction Act. Done. HBCU funding. Done. Insulin for, for 35, capping at $35. Done. They should be focusing on confidence and getting stuff done. Well, they are allowing the narrative to be driven about his age. Your boy Volan really is a big fan of Joe Biden, man. I tell you. And he really loves the Build Back Better plan. Build Back Better plan. To hear Democrats talk about it, you would think the Build Back Better plan was as good as the New Deal. FDR is rolling over in his grave going, how'd you come up with such a better plan than mine? You're going to re revolutionize the middle class. You're right. The Build Back Better plan is no New Deal. Okay? Not even close to it. Instead of telling people what's in the Build Back Better plan, let's talk about what was not in the Build Back Better plan. Two-year free college. No free community college, which is what people wanted. No single-payer health care or Medicare for all, a universal health care plan or universal health care option. That's out there. That's really important. I mean, you would think with all the political capital that was spent, you get something big out of it. With all the money that was dumped into this program, that's causing record inflation that makes you have to have an Inflation Reduction Act. You would think you would have something really dope that you could really hang your hat on instead of an acronym and then not really talk about what's in it. Why? Because wasn't that much in it. Wasn't that really that much in it to change the lives of Americans? If it did, guess what? People wouldn't be going, what did Biden do? They would know what Biden did because they'd feel it in their everyday lives. But those plans, all this stuff Roland's talking about, did not impact enough people in their everyday life for them to go, I know exactly what Biden did. It's only common sense, folks. If somebody get walked up and gave you a car, you wouldn't forget about it. If somebody paid off your rent, paid up your mortgage for the rest of the year, you wouldn't forget about it. But if somebody said, bless you after you sneeze, an hour later you might forget they said that. And that's sort of like what Biden did with the Build Back Better plan. I don't care what Joe Biden says or what Roland says or what Simone Sanders says or what Joy Ann Reed, J Dr. Jason Lyon Johnson says, any of them. At the end of the day, it wasn't that big a deal. It was a big price tag, but it didn't change life that much. Now let's move on to this insulin because everyone loves talking about insulin. They love telling black people insulin, insulin. Um... That was done by Trump, by the way, guys. The $35 cap on insulin, that was a Trump thing. Biden took it from Trump. Trump did it by executive order. When Biden came in, he shut it down, waited six months, and then put his name on it and restarted it. Roland won't tell you because Roland lies a lot. 
Stephen A. Smith won't tell you because he doesn't know. That's why he's on here kissing all his ass. Student debt relief. Student debt relief. Oh, my God, Johnson. First of all, what we wanted from Joe Biden was free community college. Not a crazy thing considering once upon a time, there was no high school in America. So we need to move things forward and start giving more to our students. And also, we need some trade schools. We need to train children not to just go to college. Contrary to popular opinion or belief, not everybody goes to college. In fact, in the black community, only about 30% of black Americans go to college. So for the rest of us, we didn't get an impact on this at all. But okay, let's say you did go. Folks, I'm being generous here with the numbers. Let's say 4 million people were helped. Not all their debt wiped out, by the way but helped, meaning some of their debt was helped. Four million people, that's a generous number. Guess what? About 40 million people owe student debt. So you do the math. Four million out of 40 million. And we're not talking about wiping it all out. We're talking about shaving off about 10 grand off of maybe your 40, 50, 60, 70, 80,000 total student loan debt bill. Okay? That's what we're talking about. That's what all this noise is about. That's what all the pounding of the chest is about that Roland's doing here. And let's not even talk. Let's look. No, I'm going to say it. Folks, student debt going forward. What happens with that? What happens if you start going? What happens if my grandkids, when they go to college, would this help them? Not really. There's some weird save program. They're supposed to help you if you, you after once you pay twelve years into your student debt, twelve years into your student debt, then maybe you'll save a thousand dollars or something. It's a crazy, wacky deal that it's got a lot of stuff. It's not even supposed to work. Whoever's the next president's gonna come in and wipe that shit right out, right? Because that's how bad it is. What else we got? Oh, the Inflation Reduction Act. Guess what? You wouldn't need an Inflation Reduction Act if it wasn't for Joe Biden causing so much damn inflation. And for what? What did we get? Did we get single health care? A single payer health care system? No. You know what we got? A bunch of election electric charge stations with no electric cars on the road. I repeat, we got a bunch of electric charge locations all around the country, but no electric cars to be able to use the electric charge stations. I'm asking you. Americans, everybody watching, how many of you have electric cars? How useful is it for Biden to spend billions of dollars on electric charge stations that we all pay for that's causing inflation? And let's not talk about the infrastructure repairs. Yeah, I'm sure there's infrastructure that needs to be repaired. I wonder who's repairing it. Migrants. That's who. That's probably why. Biden didn't want to secure that border all the way, and that's and you can't even talk about it. Roland will never bring it up. Why won't Roland bring it up? That these uh, these jobs, because eventually, if it's not migrants, people are making that assertion, black people will be saying, "Why didn't Biden earmark some contracts for black people to help with the infrastructure, help the black people whose families have been stuck to the bottom by government policies?" for the last 150 years. They don't have the guts to say that, and Roland doesn't have the heart to say that either, to push that on his show. Instead, he pushes back against it, says it could never happen. Yeah, it'll never happen because people like Roland don't have the heart to push Joe Biden to do anything. All he does is tell us how we should shut up and get in line, because Biden ain't Trump, so that's the best you're going to get. What I'm saying is, there was no incentives here. Neither one of these guys, particularly Roland, fights for these plans to be directed to help us. And I'm asking all my Americans, everybody watching, how much of these government programs, this, this infrastructure upgrades, really benefited us? Oh, the roads are better. I would have took health care over that. I would have... Gave you, I would have took you given an incentive for the state to take care of their own roads within their state, allocate some money to it, and you focus on big things that we can't do at the state level. 
But if there were things that were in Biden's plan, there were a couple of things I liked. I liked the thing about the earned income tax credit that pulled 40% of, of children living under poverty line, under the poverty line, out of poverty. That's an amazing thing. But you let it expire, and then you tell me it was Joe Manchin's fault. Folks, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. You know why? Because Joe Manchin is still a senator. He's still in office, and so is Kristen Cinema. And you know what? When people like the squad members like Jamal Bowman, Corey Bush, Ilhan Omar, AOC, or whoever, even some before they get to Congress, if Republicans or if other Democrats don't like their politics, you know what they do? They primary them. They spend money. They create other candidates and give other candidates money to try to get them out of Congress. That has happened to a number of progressives in Congress. Did they do that to, did, did the middle of the road liberals, the blue dog Democrats, the Joe Biden wing of the Democratic Party, were they so upset that Manchin screwed up Joe Biden's initiatives that they tried to get rid of him? Who camped out at Joe Biden, at Joe Manchin's doorstep? Who funneled money into a challenger of Kirsten Cinema? Who funneled money in to get rid of Joe Manchin? See, what I'm trying to tell you is politics is a dirty game. Politics is a very dirty game. And what I did not witness, what I did not witness was Joe Biden using the same apparatus to go after Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema that others have used to go after those who fight for programs that benefit us, the actual, actual working class people in America. So don't tell me that Joe Manchin ain't working with Joe Biden. Don't tell me that Kirsten Cinema screwed up the plan. The plan would have been so much better if it wasn't for these meddling ass Democrats. Nah, because if you really wanted them gone, they would be gone. I mean, actually, you have. Here's the deal. Think okay, about this ahead. here. You've heard more about Vice President Kamala Harris than you have heard from every vice president combined in the last 50 years. Nobody ever talks about the vice president. Nobody. Nonsense. If it wasn't for Kamala Harris, a lot of people would have never voted for Joe Biden. That's the pushback, Roland. And you know it's true. See, this is the thing. The truth is the truth, and it's always going to be the truth. No matter how much spin the Democratic shields try to spin. Roland, you know damn well, if it wasn't for Kamala running, a lot of people would have never voted for Joe Biden. That's the reason why Kamala matters. Don't compare him to Dan Quayle. We didn't care about Dan Quayle. Nobody voted for, what was his name? Uh, Bush? No, not Bush. Ronald Reagan. Nobody voted for Reagan because of Dan Quayle. <laughs> Nobody voted for Bill Clinton because of Al Gore. Not enough people, anyway, to make a difference. Okay? And there are people that voted for Bush because of Cheney. Very few people, except for racists, voted for Obama because of Biden. But the reality is, <clears throat> Kamala had an, out, an outsized input, an outsized impact. There you go. <clears throat> Gosh, man. Jesus Christ, guys. I'm sorry. This is what, this is what happened. Let me just, let me calm down. Let's go. Kamala Harris had an outsized impact on the election. She just did. So she comes in with all this promise. It's all this buzz. This is the problem the Democrats had. They built Kamala up to be somebody she isn't, which is a dynamic person on the stump, an influential, breaking, mind-breaking, like, vice president. She's not. A brilliant legislator. She's not. She was sort of like in the right place at the right time with the right people and willing to throw the other people under the bus. That's so. So, you know, Roland, at least try to be consistent, you know, um, with, with, the, with your talking points. You know, we all know. We, some of us will have been around more than a couple of weeks, Roland. I was here. You were here. We know why Joe Biden got elected. He got elected because 
the Democrats spend all their political capital and they influence all those people to run. And then the dropout at the drop of a hat, they all did to help Joe Biden. And you got black women to go along with Kamala to support Kamala. And they wanted to see a black uh, ish uh, Indian slash uh, Afro Jamaican uh, vice president. A brown sister is vice president. That's all it was. That's all it was. So, yeah, people are going to be paying attention to her. What you should be focusing on is the lack of rising to the occasion. When the cameras done, now when the cameras go to Kamala, too many times she caught flat-footed with nothing to say, tongue-tied, out of sorts, disheveled, like she'd been drinking bottles and bottles of wine. This is the talking points because that's how she appears. And Kamala is supposed to be the successor to Joe Biden. Nobody was saying that about Dan Quayle. Nobody was saying that about Dick Cheney. Why do people allow people to, why are you allowing? Look, this is for my viewers. Why do you let Roland lie to you? Why does he have all these subscribers? Why are these subscribers not calling out the bullshit? This is nonsense. You know damn well Kamala is supposed to be the successor for Biden. Biden even said it in speeches. I'm not, I'm just a placeholder. There's so many other talented people behind me that are going to take my place. I'm just here to get rid of Trump. And then he got in and now he's like, I guess I'll run again. And that's not the deal, man. Admit that Kamala's been an abject failure at her job. She has not risen to the occasion. And that Joe Biden has failed to live up to his part of the bargain too. Now that would be keeping it real. But if you kept it real, Roland, you wouldn't have a network or a program or an app or a future, and sass, your head would explode because you're so busy. You've always been a company guy, and that's the only way you know how to operate. That's why you did this segment because some Democrat people got on the phone and told you you were messing up. This is your way of cleaning up your mess, of actually holding Joe Biden accountable for sucking. The, the, the last part I want to get to is Roland talking about how to mobilize voters. I think Roland's got it wrong. The Biden-Harris folks got to say, we built that and that and that. We restored that and that. They got to be specific. They got to be hammering over and over and over again. But they have to understand African-Americans are saying, what do I get for my vote? If you don't articulate what you've gotten, then they're going to assume I haven't gotten anything. And so that's that's the conundrum they are in. They have to actually spend more money and more time generating to get the same voters out. The old model, that's gone, bro. There are fewer people today who go to church than they did 10 years ago. That model ain't going to work. Roland Martin also sounds a little bit like he's been listening finally to uh, New Black Media. Yeah, for seven years, I've been saying black people need something for their vote. Black people need something for their vote. And Roland would be mad and pissed off on Twitter and blocking people on Twitter for saying, what are black people going to get for their vote? What are we going to get for our vote? Roland never had a single time that he ever make a demand for black people. I've never heard Roland say he wanted anything for black people to get their votes to the Democrats. Except, wait for it, advertising revenue to his show. That's about the only thing Roland has ever been very clear about that he was demanding for black people. For him to get more money for his company, that's it. People like myself, Phil from the Phil uh, Podcast, Philip Scott Podcast, Black Authority, Vicki Dillard. Just let me say a couple people. Vicki Dillard, they, they give her a lot of smoke. They push back on her. They push back on Phil. They push back on um, Black Authority, uh, the Black Channel, TD Hip Hop Media, TD Media. Roland's been spending a lot of time dogging us. So I want, I'm going to shout all these people out and apologize to Phil for just for calling him like Republican because I think I was wrong about that. Now, I'm, big enough man, I'm a big enough man to say I screwed up right there. My bad, dog. My brother. Forgive me for that. Um, but I want to say this. It's not just about what you've done because, first of all, as I said it earlier, if Joe Biden's programs had done so much for black people, they would not be asking, what have you done for us? That's the first thing. 
So when that morons, when that fools, when that simple Simons, when that idiots, when black people say, why should I vote for? My life was better. That's because it was. Every person walking around the earth is not a paid Republican. These are regular black people with regular lives, with jobs, with responsibilities, and their lives have gotten worse, not better. And they're looking at Biden going, why would I vote for you? Instead of Roland Martin saying, do more things, hey, Roland, instead of you saying, hey, Biden, take that pen, you got about nine months, go in there and write some stuff. Do some executive orders. Focus on this. And also, tell people what you're going to do in your second term. This is going to be amazing. How about that? But see, Roland ain't even thinking about that. He's just thinking about his team winning so he can continue to get spots on his radio show, give spots on his podcast from the Democratic Party so he can collect money. If you wanted Joe Biden to win, you want to make sure black people win. That's how you win. That's how all situations, the successful strategies, are win-win strategies. You don't say, get me because I'm the best guy you'll ever get, and I'm going to save you. If you don't get me, you're going to stupid. No, you're supposed to say, this is a win-win opportunity for us both. I will do this. You do this, I will do this. This is a scenario. This is a partnership. So that's my problem with Roland Martin. That's why he's wrong. He's not holding Biden accountable. He's saying, Biden's done so much. You're just dumb if you don't realize it. What I'm saying is, if you've been taking care of home, wifey no. If you've been taking care of home, hubby no. We know if the kids were picking up the trash and doing their chores, you can look around and see it. You know, you don't need to be told. But when what you've been doing has an impacted lives, then you got to be like, oh, remember that time? Remember that time I saved your life? I told you a car was coming. Remember that time I told you the car was coming? That's Joe Biden. That's the Democratic Party. That's Roland Martin. And Stephen A. Smith, you should be ashamed of yourself. That's Stephen A. Smith, too, at this point. Well, watch this next video. Yeah, watch this next video. I go into Donald Trump, the shoes, the whole thing about the sneakers, the Trump sneakers, and about all the pushback about the speech that Donald Trump gave at the Conservative Black Federation. The Black Conservative Federation, yeah, that's it. Click right here, go check that out. I give you all the information you need to know about that. It's unbiased, it's real. It's not a bunch of Democratic BS.